All right, in this video, we're going to look at addressing uh, the following true or false question. And we're going to decide whether the function y equals 5x to the 7 over 5 minus x to the 3 over 5, does that function have a cusp at x equals 0 or not? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the first and second derivative regions of increase, decrease, and concavity uh, to help us figure all this out. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the derivative. So the derivative of x to the 7 over 5 will be 7 fifths x. If we subtract 1 or 5 over 5, we'll get to the 2 fifths power. Minus we'll have the derivative of x to the 3 fifths will be 3 fifths x. And again, if we subtract 5 over 5, that'll be to the negative 2 fifths. So we can just cancel out our 5s. Okay. We've got x to the 2 fifths and x to the negative 2 fifths. We can pull out that smaller exponent, which will be x to the negative 2 fifths. I would have to multiply by 7 to get that back. And then I'm going to need x to some power. And again, remember, when we multiply like bases, we add exponents. So I'm thinking negative 2 fifths plus what would be positive 2 fifths. Well, I think we would need positive 4 fifths so that when we add, we get to the 2 fifths. Minus, uh, we've already pulled out the correct variable in power, so we would just need minus 3 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this um, as 7x to the 4 fifths minus 3 fifths all over x to the positive 2 fifths. Okay, so now we have to find critical points. Um, and notice our original function, 5x to the 7 fifths minus x to the 3 fifths. That's going to be continuous for all values of x. So by default, you know, whatever numbers I find by setting the derivative equal to 0 or undefined, those are definitely going to be in the domain of the original function, which will mean um, any points that I find are, in fact, critical points. So just one little thing uh, to point out, just definition-wise. So again, for the derivative to equal 0, well, that's where the numerator um, equals 0. So 7x to the 4 fifths minus 3 fifths equals to 0. That'll be one thing we have to solve. To figure out where the derivative is undefined, that's where the denominator equals 0. Well, this part's uh, pretty easy. You know, you can raise both sides to the 5 over 2 power. Um, and if you do that, well, 0 to the 2 fifths power is what gives us a 0. So that makes our function undefined. Um, and for the, the uh, setting the derivative equal to 0 to solve this equation, I'll just add 3 fifths to both sides. I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over 7. So that gives me x to the 4 over 5 equals, I guess we would have 3 over 35. And now, um, you know, to get rid of this 5, excuse me, this 4 fifths power, squeeze it in there. To get rid of this 4 fifths power, I'm going to raise both sides to the 5 over 4 power. So on the left side, we just get x. Now, we have to be careful here. Um, I probably should even write the plus and minus right there, but I didn't. Um, again, this is taking the... F uh, we're raising 3 over 35 to the 5th power, but then we're taking a 4th root of it. And we're taking an even-powered root. And when we solve equations, we get both positives and negatives. So be careful about that. We're taking the 4th root, so we do have to include the positive and negative solutions. Um, actually, the first time I made this, I left that out. So, uh, you know, just goes to show you it's easy to kind of forget one little thing and um, everything's out the window. So do be careful about that. We're taking an even-powered root, so we get positives and negatives. I, you know, technically should probably include it right there. Um, so those are going to be our other critical numbers, and then x equals 0. So I'm going to make my little sign chart and think about increasing and decreasing. So our derivative, we had 7x to the 4 fifths minus 3 over 5, all over x to the 2 fifths. Okay, so I'm going to go through this a little bit faster. Um, you can check my arithmetic. So we've got 0, uh, we've got the fifth power of 3 over 35, and then the fourth root of that, we've got a positive one, and then we've also got a negative one. as we just discussed. Um, 
Notice, you know, 3 over 35, if we raise that to the fifth power, that's going to be really close to 0. If we take the fourth root of it, um, it's still going to be pretty close to 0. So I know that this is a number, you know, I know that this is going to be a number between 0 and 1. Same thing for the other one, I know that this number is going to fall between negative 1 and 0, just to help me plug in numbers to make my sign chart. All right, <clears throat> excuse me, so for example, suppose we take the number positive 1, let's plug that in. Well, that's going to be 7 minus 3 fifths, which is positive, over a positive. So that means for this entire interval, um, our function is increasing. Let's take a number that's really, 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 really arbitrarily close to 0, but positive. If I plug that into my first term, it's going to be 0, close to 0. Then we'll have minus 3 fifths, which is going to give us a negative. If we take a positive number and raise it to the 2 fifths, it'll still be positive. So that's a negative over a positive, which is a negative. So that means our function is decreasing. Let's do the same thing. Let's take a, a, a test value in between our two critical points. Let's take it arbitrarily close to 0, but make it negative. Well, again, uh, the first term is going to be super close to 0, so we'll have roughly negative 3 fifths in the numerator. Okay, it is a negative number, but when we, uh, you know, when we square it, again, this is x squared, the fifth power. That's x to the 2 fifths. So even though we're plugging in a negative number, since we're squaring it, it's going to be positive. The th fifth root will be positive. Basically, the denominator is going to be positive for any value of x. So I think we said we've got a negative over a positive, which is a negative, so it's decreasing. Um, and again, you know, honestly, for this problem, I, I don't even really care what's going on over here because we're just trying to figure out what happens at x equals 0. So technically, you know, on a test or something, I would not even worry about what happens. I really wouldn't have worried about either one of these two intervals, to be honest. But uh, just to be complete, suppose we plug in, say, negative 1. Again, we're raising it to the fourth power. That's going to make it positive. The fifth root will make it still positive 1. So we've got 7 minus uh, 3 fifths. That's going to be a positive over a positive. So that makes our function increasing through there as well. So I'm going to come back to this in just a second um, and think about you know, what's going on with the second derivative as well. All right, so having fun here. This is a nice, uh, nice involved problem. To take our second derivative, I'm just going to rewrite our first derivative. And I'm going to write it before. Um, I think before I had everything factored out. So let me see, let me let me find that part real quick here. So when we first took our derivative, we had 7x to the 2 fifths uh, minus 3 fifths x to the negative 2 fifths. And then we started factoring out, you know, negative exponents and rewriting it uh, for our first derivative. But to take the second derivative, I think it's easiest just to leave it like this, um, because then I can just use the power rule to find the second derivative. So we'll have 7 times, well, 2 fifths x. If we subtract 5 over 5, that'll give us the negative 3 fifths power. Then we've got minus 3 fifths. When we take the derivative of x to the negative 2 fifths, we'll have, well, negative 2 fifths times x. We subtract 5 over 5, that's going to give us to the negative 7 fifths. Okay, so it looks like to me we've got 14 over 5, x to the negative 3 fifths. It looks like we have positive 6 over 25, um, x to the negative 7 over 5. And now I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to factor this. So let's see, uh, I'm going to pull out x to the negative 7 over 5, the smaller of the two exponents. We could factor some numbers out, I guess like a 2 fifths, but I'm not going to mess with that. So we've got 14 over 5 times x. Uh, let's see here, so I guess negative 7 fifths. Again, we would need a positive 4 fifths here, so that when we multiply our like bases, uh, we add the exponents, that will give us to our negative 3 fifths. And then we would have 6 over 25, um, and I think that's all we would need. So let's rewrite this, y double prime. Um, let's see, we would have 14 over 5, x to the 4 fifths, plus 6 over 25, all over x to the 7 fifths.
So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to think about where the second derivative is uh, equal to 0 or undefined. So we have 14 over 5 x to the 4 fifths plus 6 over 25. That's our numerator. I'm going to set that part equal to 0. We've got our denominator. Also going to set that equal to 0. So um, this will just be at x equals 0, again, kind of our point of interest. And I'm going to solve the first equation just like before. So I'm going to subtract the uh, 6 over 25 over from both sides. And let's see here. Um, we could multiply by 5 over 14. 5 over 14. That's going to give us x to the 4 fifths equals. We could simplify here a little bit. I guess 5 goes into 5 once. It'll go into 25 five times. Uh, we can divide this by 2 and make it negative 3. Make that a 7. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Over 5 times 7 will be 35. Same thing as before. We can raise both sides to the 5 fourths power. But notice here um, we have to be careful because now if you think about this, we're taking the fourth root of this number, and negative 3 over 35 to the fifth is going to be negative. The fourth root of that, we can't take fourth roots of negative numbers uh, without using complex numbers. And again, we're just using real numbers. So this simply has no solutions. So that has no solution. So it says our only, uh, you know, our only point we need to think about where the concavity may change for the second derivative is at x equals zero. So, all right, x equals zero. Let's find our second derivative. There was our second derivative. Um, I'm going to plug in, you know, some positive number. How about positive one? Well, that'll be 14 over 5 plus 6 over 25, which is certainly positive. x to the 7 over 5 is uh, definitely going to be positive if we plug in x equals 1. So that tells me the function is concave up. Let's see, suppose we plug in a negative number that's super, super close to, well, let's plug in, uh, how about we just plug in negative 1? Um, I think that's easy enough. So if we plug in, I'm even going to make it arbitrarily close to 0. I think it'll make it, to me, easier to do the arithmetic. Okay, so if we plug in something that's close to 0 but negative, the first term is going to be super close to 0. So we'll practically have 6 over 25 on top, you know, almost equal to that. On the bottom, if we take a negative number close to 0 and raise it to the 7th power, it's negative. The fifth root of that would still be negative. So it's going to be a negative. So that tells us that our function is concave down. All right, so let's put that back together with uh, what we figured out. So there's our sign chart from our first derivative. Put that in there. Okay, so it says it's decreasing, and it goes from concave down to concave up. Um, so let's see. Uh, we also know that it was undefined at x equals 0. So what does that tell us? So it says our function is decreasing, and it's concave down. Okay, so there's a function uh, that's decreasing and concave down. But now it goes from, uh, now it keeps decreasing, but it switches to concave up. So let's see, if it's still decreasing and switches to concave up, well, the concavity is going to change, and that's going to kind of keep sort of a nice little smooth shape, in fact. So since our graph is concave down and decreasing, and then concave up and increasing, I would say, well, no, uh, it's undefined because basically what we're getting is a vertical tangent line at that point. Okay, so, you know, it should be a little steeper there. We're getting that vertical tangent at that point is what's happening here. So decreasing, concave down, decreasing, concave up. So I would say, you know, definitely it's undefined, but that is not a cusp point. Okay. Just a place where the derivative is undefined.